What do you think is better? Since you've worked with you, you've you must have worked with ECUs and all the standalone ECUs. You must have known about uh, the chip tuning thing that uh, yeah. a lot of people do in India, and the flashing. So, what do you yeah. think is the best way to you know go about your car tune it? Because I've heard from a lot of tuners that don't chip tune it, spend a little money, go on standalones. It honestly. Yeah, so it honestly depends on car to car. There are a lot of, lot of cars which have their own, which with the issues, plenty capable of giving you all the features and all the safety factors you need to keep your engine running at an enhanced power level, yet give you the reliability. Whereas there are there are cars in which you you just cannot issue. For example, if you do a one of the most favorite tuner car platforms in India. Is this team right? You can't. I I am a T thirteen guy, so yeah, I own an S T two thousand six. So you understand what I mean? Right? It's one of the most yeah. it's one of the most affordable tuner cars. You can get a decent amount of power for it. You can. It's cheap. You can buy parts. If you crash it, you break something. You can buy parts very yeah. cheap. I think Kunal Definitely. Sharma, you guys interviewed. He's a very close yeah. friend of mine, and his S T is a work of art. I mean, he really works his ass off on this, and it's a good starting platform. So in those cars where the issue is not capable. Of of handling and uh, maps or running closed loop or running open loop, yeah. you need an aftermarket ECU. But in most That's of the European true. cars, most of the Japanese cars, which are turbo cars, they generally the ECU is good enough to map. Yeah, but so what I feel add, is that even if I'm upgrading uh, my turbo, uh, like uh, I still need to change the injectors to, you know, compensate for the duty cycles and all. So it, instead it of if I'm no. spending money, why not mm-hmm. just get a good ECU? That has a ton of controls there, like a who's lot of issues that are there in the market. The only question that's is who's going to tune it? Who's going to tune it and where? Right. So yeah. in today's cars, the, all the cars are more or less, as I would call, auto-tune cars. All the factory issues. The way yeah. most of the cars work today are that the tuner is not essentially programming the exact air fuel ratio or the exact exact you know the whole True. so-called AF, EFI electronic fuel injection curve, as you they showed. Yeah, yeah. You are essentially setting targets. The ECUs work on True. targets, right? So you set a boost target that by this RPM I want this much turbo output. This much turbo. And and this much turbo output I want this much. If the turbo output is this much, I want this much air fuel ratio. And if the air fuel ratio is this much, I want but this but much that, of advanced timing or whatever. Loop, like, yeah, for no. that the thing you need a closed loop. Yes, and most of the cars are closed loop now. Everything is yeah. closed loop. Uh, you know, more the Lora, for example. I'll give you an example of the Lora because I know the car. But is it a wide band closed loop? That's no, the, that's the it's, issue. It's that it's calculated. Exactly. Calculated AFR. Exactly. Calculated so that, AFR. That's, but that's the control you get. I feel on a wide you band don't. closed no, loop. No, you don't. Honestly, nowadays the cars are very, very advanced. Particularly with direct injection, you honestly can almost ninety-nine point nine percent guesstimate with the O2 sensor how much AFR you're yeah. running. So we did the we did this test. We when we were at uh, there's a come the the dyno in Delhi called Speed Sport, and Phil yeah. is a very very well known tuner for esteem. And he has a wide band O2. So I was like, you know, we put the car and we put the lot on a dyno. I was like, you know, this is my calculated AFR. Let's see what your AFR gauge gauge recognizes. And it was 99.9 percent accurate what the calculated right. AFR was. And this is the issue of a car which is a family sedan, not supposed to be tuned, not designed to be tuned. Where the Octavia RS is designed to be tuned, yeah. so if this issue can do it, modern issues can do it. They are 99. In today's date, unless you want to reduce weight and remove all the other components, remove AC, remove this, yeah. a standalone issue does not make sense. Primarily for three reasons. Firstly, no, there's nobody in India who can tune it properly. There are yeah, not many good dynos in India. Even the dynos that are there, they are either not. Well calibrated or gives mixed readings. I know this is a controversial statement, but yeah, yeah well, they it's do. Fine, it's fine. Yeah, That's so it. and the third, the the final reason is there is no way nobody to tune it properly. You the 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 cost of a standalone ECU does not yeah. justify the amount of gains you're going to get out of it, unless you're true, building true. a hardcore race car. Like you know, I have got people. My friend has an S4 which is running close to about 500 horsepower and it was 333 stock. So a car which is running 200 horse, over 200 horsepower over the factory design limit is on in the, the is on the factory ECU with just a just a, a new software put into it by the tuning company. So tuning companies have come a long way. Definitely. So it's much easier for them also to work on the stock ECU than multiple standalone configurations. But then uh, I feel that uh, refl- while reflashing the ECU, 
the in general in general a stock ecu has a lot of fail safe modes yeah. when you compare it to the standard ecu that is completely in my control in my control yeah. as in the person who is tuning the ecu so yeah. that way i feel it's much more easier rather than actually reflashing the ecu then figuring out what is the trip that is going to happen if xyz condition happens it depends on tuners right there are a lot of tuners who just exactly. bump up the bump up the turbo boost and bump up the yeah. fuel ratio as ecu I mean, that's not how it works you big, have to know what's yeah. happening yeah so I means people like apr revo who are specializing in the european cars right for sure. particularly the cars that i deal with they do a lot of r&d they configure all out of the 250 ecu parameters i'm just taking a wild number yeah. they would calibrate 220 of them 30 would be ac you know how yeah. how very cool and pump and all they would calibrate everything in those cases the standard the stock ecu is good enough in cases yeah. where you are pushing beyond for example in my in my car when i lost when i could not push i went reached the limit of the sensor and we had to do a 3 bar sensor the ecu still could not reach 3 bar so we have a, we had yeah. to scale, rescale the output of the 3 bar sensor to reach the 2 bar limit of the ecu so the, when in this kind of situation the yes, standalone ecu makes sense but for most of the applications that you're doing unless you're adding a forced induction to a naturally aspirated car uh, the stock ecu is good enough so you just need to find enough, a good yeah. good enough tuner who can who takes care of all the parameters so you don't hit that you know those safety protocols or they modify the safety protocol like for example on the gen 3 tsi engine which is in the last yeah. gen octavia rs and this rs245 there is a lot of heat management protocols built into it because this car is a slightly different engine than the lora i mean it's same it's the next generation of the lora's engine lora was a 1.8 gen 2 it's called the ea aaa generation this is also an ea aaa but this is a gen 3a so it's a revision revision of the engine the short block remains the same the head is different and this and because the head is different they they have done something very unique in this car normally if you guys uh, have been turboing your cars or or you know adding aftermarket turbo charges onto your cars you know there's a header the exhaust yeah. header exhaust manifold and onto it the turbo charge is bolted on yeah. in the in the gen 3b or just a gen 3a and gen 3 engines the exhaust header is integrated into the head so there's no oh. header so you're there's essentially no mounting your turbo onto four bolt points that's it so it's yeah. mounted directly onto the head so, and there's no so header visible affect, on the if i am trying to upgrade my turbo will it not do will it not affect the flange size like each and no, every turbo will have a different flange size there is the there are enough man turbo manufacturers and this is the beauty of you know the whole wag ecosystem that they affects they gen design so many cars and they have yeah. the engine same engine in so many different models of the car that the larger ecosystem of uh, what you call vendors around them they gen- they create turbos which would bolt onto the same head same four bolt points on the turbo yeah. so for example the biggest turbo that you can get for this car is the EFR 13 3170 i don't know it's a big it's like the size of my head and there's one yeah. guy running it in india and it bolts right on and the problem that comes with this kind of a head design is that you went have integrated head integrated exhaust manifold it was done not for efficiency or for for you know more power it was done for efficiency more power. efficiency yeah so, so you are basically it's, having a little bit more scavenging effect in the cylinder because the head is they do it the according man- to the acoustics yeah it sounds horrible it, it's not the yeah. nine okay? it's more of the harmonics to be exact yeah right so then you have the cooling problems right your that entire manifold because it's sitting inside your head and not on outside hanging off it's heating up the head so there's a cooling jacket which is running across your uh, across the manifold across the head for that particular part and that's cooling up your heating up your coolant also so heat management becomes the issue so all the gen 3 cars have heat management built into it and okay. any good tuner would also modify the heat management protocol so your oil temperature will not shoot up Yeah. In a turbo car, oil temperature is everything. If you lose oil temperature, so, your car is gone. No matter how definitely. good a how good AFR you maintain, if you can't keep things lubricated, your turbo yeah, is toast. Your engine is toast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, lost, I mean, I have I have lost engine because my I have a BMW 320i, which I bought as a I got a very good deal on it. It was rear wheel drive turbocharged four cylinder engine. and i blew the motor the i bent a rod in the motor because uh, oh firstly i was running a mixture of fuels like i was running 97 and I didn't couldn't okay. get 97 
and BMW had advertised in India that this car on the regular fuel. So I ran into regular fuel like an idiot and I bent a rod. <laughs> Fortunately for me, BMW was nice enough to, what do you call, give me a warranty on the motor. But yeah, so a lot can go wrong when you're tuning with aftermarket ECUs. True, true. And the, you need the, to have that knowledge that, okay, you need to know that what's happening. It's, it's exactly. about peace of mind. You know, a, a, a lot of engineering goes into designing a car and designing the control exactly. systems of the stock ECU. So unless you know exactly what you're doing, stick to the stock ECU because there are a lot of control algorithms in there which are keeping even your modified super high horsepower engine in check and in not check. letting it blow yeah, up. True. So Definitely, that's that. 